Martin, welcome to Explain Everything. That's me here and together with Sam here. Hi, Sam. Hello, everyone. Um, so I was just on mute. Thanks for joining. Fantastic. Sam is with us. Together with Sam, we're going to provide you with this session that is collaborative. So before we begin, let me just mention that here's a connection code that you can use in Explain Everything to connect to us. As this, this session is all about collaboration, we're going to provide you with information about basic features of Explain Everything, but we most of all want to answer all of your questions. So you can try out what we'll be showing together with us. You can uh, practice uh, and um, acquire some skills. So if you have explain everything on your device, you can just type in this code in the search field to connect to us. Or if you'd like to connect using a web browser, you can go to explaineverything.com. and just put this code into search field. There is one, one more way you can connect to us. You can go to expl.ai and then type in the code in your address like that. So if you access this address, you'll immediately connect to our session here. So you'll basically have the same tools that you see on the screen. We're broadcasting uh, Sam's iPad, so those that won't participate collaboratively can still watch us going, but I encourage you to try explain everything experience for yourself. What we'll be doing, oh, there's, there's a lot of you connecting, uh, connected already, that's fantastic. Um, just keep in mind that we all have the same tools, so, so we'll be showing you um, tips and tricks using objects on a canvas, you'll be able to move those objects. So, but we won't be offended if, if something goes wrong because that's the nature of explain everything that we have the same access to the same tools and we can all work together. So we won't restrict you anyhow. What we want to do during the session before we begin, I'll show you three scenarios that are like, you know, the basis of explain everything. And then we'll go ahead, Sam will provide you with a short overview of explain everything, how it works. And then we can open for questions. So at any point of time, you can ask us questions on a chat, on a Zoom chat, when we'll respond to those, or you can also type questions here, question. Oh, just here, questions like that. You can put them on a canvas you, by writing or typing question. And if you leave questions on a canvas, we'll come back to those questions and we'll try to answer them. We'll, for sure, we will answer them. So try to take your time in order to provide questions or topics that you would like us to go through. If there's something that you want us to demonstrate, just, just suggest a direction that we should take during this webinar. As I mentioned, it's all for you. We will adjust the pace and the scope of what we're going to discuss according to your needs. So before we do that, let me open showing you three scenarios how explain everything is used in schools and for that i do have this one pager here and there are basically three scenarios that we mostly uh, often talk about first one is related to presentation so you can you can use whiteboard, digital whiteboard on a tablet in order to provide um, visuals using uh, a projector or monitor and kind of like replace a checkboard with a digital device with all benefits of this way of showing materials to the classroom. 
<laughs> Sarah is using my material, but that's okay because what I can do is I can take what I need for my next part here. I'm sorry. I'll do it one more time. I'll cut out an element of this graph to show you second scenario. We use explain everything white planner videos, and we we often see planner everything so whiteboard used as a tool for video productions for young learners to uh, illustrate their uh, knowledge, but also for teachers to provide video summary of the lesson or shoot the entire lesson, um, or ask students to provide video projects during or after lessons. So that's the second scenario. There's one more that is like a, um, I wouldn't say complex, but this is the most exciting scenario as it uses all features of Explainer Everything. It's the scenario where Explainer Everything whiteboard is used for feedback and assessment. That means we have this loop where student and teacher interact and exchange projects. So let's say teacher provides instructions or template using a project here and students response with the video. And then the video can be uh, assessed by teacher and suggestions for improvements can be provided to student. And you see this, this loop still continues here um, based on the platform that we provide and we call explain everything that is a composition of both applications and cloud services. So that's basically three areas where we see a lot of uh, usage um, uh, within institutions, educational institutions, schools, and in the classrooms. What we'll do now is I'll ask Sam to provide you with a short introduction to explain everything. So for those that see it for the first time, they can see how explain everything can be used in practice. Sam? Hello, hello. Okay. Guys, Bart, can you confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. We're, okay. we're working with Sam from two different continents, so yeah. <laughs> we need to. So, yeah, sorry, you probably didn't hear my introduction earlier. I just took out the, the headphones that weren't working. But again, thank you everyone for, for joining um, today for the webinar. Um, this is, as Bart mentioned, this is for, for everyone involved, and we want uh, to ensure that you guys have time to explore on your own. Uh, we won't get offended if, if you're moving things around or, or contributing to the canvas. Um, those are all great things and, and things that we think will kind of help evolve your uh, sophistication and expertise within Explain Everything. So um, all that is great. Uh, I'm going to spend the next probably 10 to 15 minutes going through a quick kind of overview of the tools uh, in Explain Everything. Uh, and then we're going to finish up with Bart just discussing some of the use cases. Uh, and then again, as mentioned, um, we'll, we'll be happy to send um, along uh, a copy of this of this webinar to the folks involved. And we also can answer any questions at the end that you guys might have. It can be anything from asking about features to asking about use cases to asking about uh, will this work in this type of scenario. We can answer all of those questions for you today. So let me just jump right in here. Uh, so what, what I'm going to the kind of overview that I'm going to use right now is uh, with the understanding that that some of you might have experience with explaining everything other, other of you may not have any experience. So I'm going to start with kind of the real basics as the as the name of the webinar implies uh, the real basics of explain everything and I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about all of these tools here uh, and feel free again to continue to ask questions uh, within the, uh, the zoom chat or that Q&A section. Uh, for, for questions that will be answered following this demo. Great, let me hop right in. So uh, what you'll see here is me interacting with the screen. Um, that, that little purple dot that you see, that's every tap or gesture that I make on the screen. So when I touch the screen, it's making that, that, that tap gesture. Now you're probably wondering how, why it's doing that or, or how I'm doing that. Well, 
Uh, nested under the settings tab in that top right hand corner is this settings option here. And this is how I always like to start with the settings because a lot of people ask about, you know, what can you do? How can you change the landscape or the, the kind of the modes within explain everything? Well, this is a great place to start to, to help understand what's, what's really possible here. So folks that are, you know, left-handed, they can change the toolbar style. They can also change the alignment uh, of the record button. Um, they can also, there's this uh, second screen or mirror mode. Um, for a lot of the use cases within explain everything, teachers are teaching with their device and then uh, displaying it on a screen at the front of the room. Uh, so there's this option for second screen or mirror mode, uh, which can, is re reflected up here. So the, the, the mirror mode will just mirror your actual toolbar and explain everything, whereas second screen removes the toolbar and it'll just have the whiteboard there for everyone to see. So that's great for teaching. Um, this display on screen taps and gestures. When I turn that on, I get that gesture move. Uh, so you can see any, all my interactions with the screen. When I turn that off, you won't see that, right? So I'm going to leave that on today for the demo because I think it's quite useful. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these, all of the, the settings within here. There's quite a few settings that you can kind of uh, uh, look at to kind of design the type of experience that you're looking for. Same with editing. You know, you can edit in certain project ratios. Uh, you can export in different resolution styles and qualities and file formats. Um, the recording, you know, you can change the resolution and all of those things, as well as some of these integrations. And the integrations are, are things, if you aren't familiar with Explain Everything, that makes it quite unique. The ability to bring in content from external sources, such as Google Drive and OneDrive or Box or even Slack, uh, and then export to those destinations as well once you're done with your creation. Right. So, Right. And just one, one thing to mention here, don't get intimidated with the number of options. As we go through those options, explain them on webinars that are related to use cases. So those options related to videos are explained on the webinar related to explainer videos. We do have actually recordings of past webinars and where we go through those options. So if you're interested in that, go to YouTube channel of ours and you'll find the recordings there. And one more thing before Sam continues, Sam is actually showing you um, explain everything being on slide number two. Those that collaborate with us, they can move freely in between slides. So I see some of you already are still on slide number one, but if you want to follow Sam, go to slide number two to see his actions. Great. Yeah, thanks, Bart. And so, yeah, as you can see, you can have multiple, multiple people within the project and you can have people on different slides, which is quite a unique feature of, of Explain Everything. So let me get started with the toolbar over here. So um, the tools along, along the toolbar here, they're all quite different. They're actually uh, organized in terms of uh, what we think is, is uh, most valuable, uh, determined by what's used most often by, by our customers and our users. So um, you know, all of, this are, all of these we think are, are very important tools built into the experience. Uh, but they're, again, prioritized in what, what we really think is, is uh, what distinguishes Explain Everything from other whiteboards. So uh, at the top there is the ability to add in different types of media. Right? This, is, this is quite an quite a, uh, awesome feature within Explain Everything. So you can add in any different type of content. You could add in things directly from Google Drive if you want it. Right? I'm not going to sign in right now. You could add in things directly from your photo gallery within Explain Everything. So those external cloud sources, you have access to those spaces to bring in content, for example, right? So I could go to, um, you know, my camera roll, right? And I could, I could look through my camera roll here and I could add in a, a picture if I wanted or a, or a PDF um, from my camera roll, right? So I could import pictures or PDFs directly into the, the canvas. I could also uh, import, uh, I could also import uh, clip art directly from my clip art library that's already kind of pre-existing clip art uh, built in explain everything, right? So you have all access to all of these kind of PNG style images that can be directly added into uh, the canvas here. You can also add in a live web browser, right? So, um, you know, if I wanted to do a, a Google search for a picture of the sun, right? And maybe I wanted to use that picture of the sun in one of my explanations, as long as it's an open source image, right? I could crop the sun out directly from the browser there. Let's try that one time. 
here. Try a different way. I think it's because people are collaborating. I could copy that image directly from, from the browser there. And if I wanted to use it, I could add it in right to my canvas. Right. So there's a kind of a number of different ways that you can use that, that uh, add media button to bring in existing content, pictures, videos that, that you might want to annotate or um, kind of incorporate into, into a project, which is quite neat. Uh, there's a, a number of other things nested within that, that space there. Um, you know, you can look up open source images from Unsplash, right? So you could look up a picture of a lake, right? And I could have this picture of a lake as my background and create a story about, you know, where this canoe is going, right? So there's really the ability within Explain Everything to bring in uh, tons of different types of content that might not be accessible uh, from, you know, just a typical whiteboard where you're just drawing and annotating. So that's really kind of a unique part there. The, the second uh, button there is, is the hand button, which actually just allows you to move objects around the canvas within Explain Everything. And what's quite unique about Explain Everything is, and I'm gonna jump down here, oops, I'm gonna jump down here, is the ability to really work in an infinite canvas, canvassing space, right? So you're not limited to the real estate you have on your device within Explain Everything, right? You can actually uh, work in any space on the canvas. It is a truly infinite canvassing space. Uh, and you can really use that, that space to, to uh, fit the work that you're doing. Again, you can use a number of different slides as well. I just added another slide. But you also have that infinite canvas uh, to use in your, in your project or your creation. Great. Uh, I'm going to keep moving down here. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through the, the next parts of the toolbar, the, the draw tool, uh, which is quite nice. You can change the, the color, right? This is, and you could you know, highlight or point to something. You could also change the width or the, the fatness of the, of the pen. You can change the color. You can also use this pencil, right? So it actually looks like a pencil when you're, when you're drawing. There's a highlighter tool, right? So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm looking at this PDF, uh, and let's actually do a quick example, uh, I'm going to hit record and I'm going to highlight on this PDF. Right? And I can say, well, it feels like a regular pencil. It also enables precise writing for interactive learning without limits. And as you can see here, right, within this, within this piece, they're actually using explain everything as their example. Right? And what you saw yeah. there was, was there uh, was the ability, right, to record everything that was happening on the screen, uh, both my voice as well as the annotations on the screen, right? So there's two tracks. On the bottom is the voice track and you won't be able to hear it because I'm connected through a lightning cable. And then the top is the video track, but I could play that back, right? And you would actually see that the highlights that I'm making on that PDF, right? So the, the highlight is a great way to annotate documents. Awesome. And for those, and for those that were on slide one when Sam pressed record, they were brought to slide two. So that's, that's the feature of explain everything. If you start recording, there are people in session on different slides, they are brought to the slide where the recording is happening. So that's, that's what happened. Great. Yeah, thanks for, for some of that. So that'll be new for a lot of you that are part of this right now, when you're actually joining in a collaboration, you're actually, when I, when I hit the record button, you're taken to the, the space that I'm recording. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I've gotten to the, the, the pen tool, the highlighter tool, the erase tool, right? So this will actually, you can, you can erase things on the slides. Uh, this is quite new and a great uh, new addition to explain everything where you have the ability to, to erase. You can also, what you see here is I'm actually erasing just the pen. You can also go down here, right? Which will allow you to erase images as well. It's like magic. Um, the, the fill tool, which is quite nice. So if I have a circle here and I want to fill it with a specific color, I can do that. This is the shape tool. So you, if you're wondering how I got that arrow, uh, I just added a shape. You can add you know, squares, rectangles, whatever shapes that you like. You can also create your own shapes using this button. 
See, that turns into a star. Great, shape matched, right? So you can create your own shapes within Explain Everything. You can also uh, use the uh, text tool, right? It also has speech to text, which is a quite nice feature of Explain Everything as well. Um, this is the crop tool, so you might have seen me earlier. You can actually crop things out and explain everything, right? Right, so I can crop things out from the browser, I can crop things out from PDFs. The delete button, where I can actually remove things that I've created. Uh, this is the, the pointer. So if I'm, if I'm doing a recording, let's give it another example. Um, I hit the record button, I go down here. I can actually use this pointer button to point out things within a PDF that I might want to. And this is actually going back to a recording I was doing earlier, right? And it doesn't leave any mark. So it's not like using the pen where you leave a mark. The pointer, this is like a, is like a natural pointer where it actually just leave that, I'll play it so you can see what it would look like. You'll see that pointer jump in there. I'm just pointing things out within that PDF, right? So just like any laser pointer that you're using, it, it creates kind of that it doesn't leave a mark, but it, it'll point out things on the, on the canvas. Great. Um, and then finally, last but not least, uh, is the inspector tool, which kind of helps arrange things within your, within your space. So if I zoom way out here, right, these are all the things that I've added here. I could, if I wanted to, I could use the inspector to kind of arrange things on the canvas. I could group them all together, for example. Right, and now everything will move as one. Right, let's, and then I'm going to go back and pretend I didn't do that. All right. Wonderful. So I'm, I'm almost done here. Uh, so that's the toolbar, right? That, that's the toolbar over here. Those are all the tools that are built in to explain everything. And, and we hope that you guys will do some exploration there. The, uh, the zoom tool at the bottom here that I showed earlier, right, will allow you to zoom in and zoom way out within the canvas, kind of using everything that, that you need, all the space that you need within the canvas. And as I go back to that red square, I just hit the reset button, which takes me back to my original space that I worked in, right? That's why I keep hitting that reset button. And then we have here, these are the recording tools, right? So as you can see, I, you can, you can uh, even in, collabor in, in a collaborative session as we have now with eight, eight people that are joining us, you can, you, can, uh, you can record everything that's happening, right? Uh, as you can see, it'll take a minute to jump to certain sections of that recording because of uh, that we're, we're basically transferring all this information over Wi-Fi, but you can create a collaborative recording, which is quite amazing. Um, uh, you can also mix recording or overwrite recording, right? So as you saw earlier, uh, when I added in that uh, the, the laser pointer, you probably saw that uh, highlights were happening as well, right? If I play that there, what you'll see is I jump into that space and you'll see I'm actually drawing and I have a laser pointer. Um, and that's what we call mixed recording, where I'm actually layering recordings on top of each other, right? If I don't want to do that, I can just change it to overwrite, where I'm actually overwriting the entire recording. But you have that ability to layer recordings on top of each other, which is something that many people who have used Explain Everything don't know about. Okay, finally, we have here, this is what we call the slide sorter, where you can jump to different slides and you can delete recording. So I'm going to delete the recording from all my slides. So now that recording's gone from here. Um, I'm gonna clear my space here. You can also change the background color, right? Or I could change a pattern within, the, within Explain Everything. And all those things can be done uh, within that slide sorter function. Finally, we have this export option up here, right? So, we can, we can pretend that I've, I've created a, a project that's worthwhile here and not just a bunch of shapes um, that I want to <laughs> maybe export, right? So what I can do is hit this export button at the top and there's a number of different export options. One is create web video link. And what's a web video link? A web video link is just a URL that will take someone to the project that you've created, right? Uh, and you can allow that product to be downloaded or you, or you uh, can make sure that it's not, it's not able to be downloaded. So now people can access this project via that code. Uh, if, if, I, if I basically share this code with them, they can access this project via that URL, either from the browser or they can, they can uh, access it from a, their, their app on an iOS device or an Android device. 
or you can export in the more traditional methods, right? Where I would actually, I'm not going to do it right now, but I can, I could proceed with export and I'd export it as just an MP4 video and post it on Google Classroom or Schoology or any of the uh, learning uh, management systems that I'm using, where I'm actually basically taking the project that I'm working on and exporting it to a different destination. Wonderful. Um, Fantastic. So that's going to be it for the, the demo today. And uh, please let me know if Sam, you have any questions. Back to you, Mark. Sam, maybe, maybe we could demonstrate the collaborative recording. Because I understand, I remember on one of our sessions, what we did, we, we, we put in a bunch of cars and we did a crash derby. It was like four of us and it was a, hell, it was a great video. Why don't we put to the clip a few cars and try to at least simulate how the traffic uh, would look like when recording it uh, uh, collaboratively with those participants. So, so yeah. if, if you guys could uh, go to slide number two, if you're not on slide number two, join us in slide number two and I'll try to put in a few cars for you. Uh, Let me one. see it. Are there any within the clip art space? Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, 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 they are. So here's a car. And I'll just duplicate it. So we have a few cars. There we go. And maybe we can color them as you showed. So one is blue. Well, the color fell off. Sam, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so we have a red car and maybe yellow. Uh, Oh yeah, yellow, yes, I was turning it black, but let, let it be yellow. So guys, if you could grab those cars with your fingers and try to move them, let's try to move them all together. I'm gonna right. hit the record button. Okay, if we're already ready for that. So I'll be moving red car, Samuel is moving violet car, and green is going to move the blue one with, oh yeah. <laughs> There's Someone so zoomed out. Someone zoomed out, but we can still see Samuel moving that car far, right. far away from our viewpoint. But this is this is basically a good illustration of what you can do collaboratively. You can move a bunch of objects on the screen, do it together, even change perspective as someone did during this recording. Right. Exactly. And and what's nice here? So what we did there, right? If we want to re return to what we just saw, right? I could play it back. Mm -hmm. Jump to the beginning of it, right? So I could play this back, and we can see everyone kind of moving their the different cars around uh, as as kind of this collaborative project unfolds. And then it looks like someone zoomed out. Um, now, you're some of you are probably wondering how can we control this? So if we have, uh, for example, uh, a number of students, and we only want certain ones to contribute to the project, you know, we can we can lock that out for specific people, right? So you can, uh, we have the, uh, over here on the right hand side, the people that are uh, joined. Um, and within that, within that space, you can actually change who can edit, who can, uh, who can actually contribute to the space. So you can have people be only view only, and they would only be able to view what you're doing uh, instead of contributing. So you can kind of create the type of space that you want. For today's example, we wanted to make sure that everyone could contribute and kind of mess around with the whiteboard. Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to create a more structured space within a classroom, that's possible by, by some of the, the different, uh, the way the permissions that we've built into to the experience here. Exactly, exactly. And I don't know about you, Sam, but I love the messiness of explain everything. And I even encourage teachers to allow kids to think around and find their way of, you know, using this experience without, you know, impacting experience of other participants. This is also a skill to learn, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's all, it's, it's, students have quite a, quite a bit of fun, um, you know, being able to be creative and, and do their own thing within, within explain everything. So it's some of the features that we, we really like to promote. As adults, I just saw yellow car going around the sun. That was cool. <laughs> I don't know who was that. Was it Karen? But that was, that was great. So we got a few questions. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, we got a few questions. And why don't we go one by one answering those? 
yeah, there are a few on slide number one. Uh, Sam, would you like to take the first one on the top left? Sure. So um, if you use this as your notes for the day, can you save it as a PDF and post it to Google Classroom? Yes. So that's something you can, you can certainly do. Um, so what one thing we've done here uh, is the ability to actually start with a template, right? So, you know, if you're using this for notes one day, you want, you might want to use the notepad. If you if you're using, if you're having a meeting, you might want to use the meeting template. You can also create your own templates within explain everything. So if you have, uh, you know, a certain type of, of notes that you like to take or a certain type of notepad, you can actually create your own template. You don't even always have to start with a blank whiteboard. For example, I could jump into this meeting template right here. Right. And now I have a meeting template if I want to use this for, for my daily notes. And then in terms of exporting, right, all I have to do is hit that export button up there, hit export. And we're in a collaboration right now, so it won't show me how to do it. But if I hit proceed with export, right, it'll then just take me to an option to say export as PDF. Uh, and I could export that and post it into Google Classroom, which is a great way to use it. So the answer is yes. What's great. the next question? I saw one more here. Uh, there is a question related to small objects on the screen. So what if it's, it's hard to move a, an object around? Sam, how would you go about this? Let's say those small cars on slide number two. How yeah. would you access those objects? Right, so uh, what you do to kind of access the small objects, right? If I can't, for example, if I'm trying to use the hand tool and I can't control something, all I'm gonna do is zoom in, right? And that object becomes much larger. And then I can just take it. And if I need it to be larger in, in, in the entire slide, right, I'll just use both my fingers and expand it, right? And then I have a larger car that I can easily grab and move around. Now, now one thing to notice here is that those that are on slide three and would watch Sam doing it, as, as Sam was zooming in, all other participants are not changing their perspective. Sam, can you, can you explain why is that? Right, so, uh, so when I'm zooming in, you're not, you're, you, you're basically taken, you're not, uh, there's, no, there's no following me around, right? You're, you, you have a purview of the entire, uh, of the entire canvas. So uh, you, you're, what you're seeing is the outline of this red. Oop, looks like someone Correct. might be joining. Right, and so when I zoom in or zoom out, right, depending on how, depending on how I'm, uh, you know, moving around the campus, it looks like it's playing our video again. Someone's is playing the video now. <laughs> right. Um, depending on how I'm how I'm interacting with the canvas, you won't see all of those movements because you're you're uh, in a in what we call ninja mode, right, which will allow you just to see the entire canvas. Did I explain that right? Mark. Yeah, great. I mean, Ninja, so from our perspective, Ninja is this sneaky way of, of zooming in or out without dis disrupting, disrupting view of other participants. So this is something that will soon uh, be changed in UI. So it's going to be more clear. But for now, it's good to just remember that if you use Ninja, it's only you zooming in. Others, they will see what they saw before. But if you turn off Ninja, that would mean that everyone will follow your perspective. Right, so now everyone is following me around because I turned the Ninja mode off, right? So now everyone is following me around the canvas when I move things around the canvas and everyone is, is, is joining me. Whereas if I turned Ninja on, right now you'll just stay within those cars and I might be zoomed out. So your device might, might look different than mine right now because I have this option over here called Ninja mode on. Great. Exactly. There was also a question related to small text. So what do you do if you, let's say, create a text object and those letters become very small? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, so let's say that, mm -hmm. I have some small text here. Yeah. I can make it very small if I wanted. I can zoom in here. So it's the same thing as the car. I could zoom in and go get it and then make it larger. I could also, within the text box, if I jump back into the text box, 
I could just select all the text and I have the option here to change just like within like a Word document, right? I have the option to change the size of the text, change the color of the text. Um, so you, if, you're, if you're worried about the size, you know, I can make it much larger within, within my display here. Right, so there's two options with the text box to, to make sure that you know, the small objects aren't, aren't lost. And some of you connected to the session using browsers, so those options to change the font size might look different, but they exist in the browser just in a different space, in a different, in a different place. Exactly. Great, so we have, uh, there's a couple, So let me see. Uh, there's another question. Is there a way to set a page to a specific paper size, a letter size, so you can use it as a page layout tool? So we do have, we do have option to, to change um, the proportions of the screen, but they are basically used for exporting projects. So imagine if you use Explain Everything Whiteboard to create a video and you want to have 16 per nine, let's say, because that goes well with YouTube. You can change that. Sam, if you could demonstrate where the frame options are. Uh, not even here, in the top left, uh, where you change the name of the project. Oh. If you go outside of settings, and if you, oh, exactly. And there's a frame options here in the middle of that pop-up. Exactly. And here you can change how you want this um, frame to look like. So if you are about to export this as a portrait video, four to three, you can, you can, you can select, that, select that option. But keep in mind that Canvas and Explainer everything is actually unlimited. So it's a matter of, you know, habit, if you want to use that as a template, it's, it's basically your choice how you want to export the results. If entire lesson or project that you're creating Explain Everything will exist in the cloud or within Explain Everything space, you don't have to worry about the proportions because they are on the limits then. Right. And so, and, and one other question was about the, this, this lock next to the ninja, right? So I turn ninja on and off. I can actually lock that mode so it doesn't change, right? So I can turn it on and off still, but when I lock it, it won't, it won't jump in and out of it. It won't jump in and out of, in and out of uh, uh, ninja mode. It'll actually stay locked in that mode until I turn it on or off. Otherwise, it might, it might depending on who I'm collaborating with, they might have the ability to kind of turn that on and off. Um, from their own device. Precisely. That, that's a, that was a question coming from Dion uh, related to locking in Ninja. And to be honest, it is a confusing option and we're aware of that. And that's why we're going to, in about two to three weeks, uh, release a version where we're going to change the Zoom uh, tool. So it's going to be easier. Just with one button, we'll be able to, uh, uh, to move around the screen. Because you know the frame that you see in this center of the screen now is actually something we call a camera frame. So this is something that is registered when you when you record a video. If you use Ninja and zoom out and see this red frame, that means you're taking a vantage point, like a perspective, seeing more that will end up on the video. So in the update updates that will come soon to all of the platforms, you'll see that we will detach. Um, the perspective that you can control with Zoom tool from the camera frame that will be controlled with a new tool related to the recording. Correct. So now okay. it looks like we're having cars that are getting farther and farther away. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you know, the, the, the real, um, you know, focus on, on the web webinar today was just to have everyone join and, and hopefully get a feel for, for what's possible. Um, we can wrap up in the next like 10 minutes. Uh, I think Bart can talk a little bit about some of the use cases um, that we see for Explain Everything. So not just, you know, how it's being used, but actually, you know, putting it into, into practice. So unless there's other questions that we have uh, uh, right now, 
Um, it looks like we've answered all of them for here. We can jump into this final slide. Oopsies, I just added another one. Um, jump into slide five. And Bart, if you want to, if you have, I don't know if you have uh, additional information, but I know you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the actual use cases for Explain Everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I, we could use slide number one because we have this one okay. pager there. So if, oh, you, great. If, you, if you move that one, and I'll just bring up this page here, and I'll get it to the front. So, so the way we observe usage of explain everything, we learned that that mostly explain everything is used for visual presentation and explainer videos. And this last scenario that uh, I mentioned before is a kind of like a summary of those two, where those two are used in the process together. We're excited about explainer videos though, because explainer everything is very unique with its capabilities. Um, recording capabilities, and Sam already demonstrated some, that is this layered recording we call mixed recording, is something that, 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 make, that can make your life easier when you create a lesson as a recorded video, or if you let your students provide you um, um, with, let's say, home assignment in the form of a video. Explain everything is unique because what we are capturing on the screen when you when you're pressing record button is not actually what it, it's not actually frame by frame what's happening on the screen rather we're capturing actions manipulations object changes new objects added to the canvas so you can change them over time and that's why explain everything whiteboard is unique for creating videos we're capturing activity on the screen as you go and you can change the activity that you provide to the app or add more activities later recording again, again, for more sophisticated result. Um, yeah, um, it's uh, something I emphasize perhaps too much, but we're very unique in this regard because very, speaking pract very practically, if you want to have a video um, recording of your lecture. So it's, let's say you provide instructions to students within this scenario. With uh, Apple TV or Google Chromecast, you broadcast your screen to the monitor visible in the classroom for students. You can press record and <laughs> do as you would in this scenario, but in the end, have a recording of your lesson that can be shared with students later. Or if you already have a recording of a lesson, but let's say you want to provide some changes and use the existing recording from last semester in the new one, you can, you can change the recording that you have in the project easily by recording audio track again or adding new elements to the recording without the need of any video editors. So in a way, Explain Everything can replace those tools and provide you with one space, one tool for all needs related to explanation, learning, and video recording. So I think that's, that's very interesting, the way uh, we think about active teaching, uh, visual presentation with the recording and the collaboration that we show here because what we try to do today, it's quite messy. We're showing tools, we're showing objects, some random elements to it. But if you think of providing a lesson, so that is this scenario, with your students that can co-create elements that you'll be using in your presentation, let's say, or you can think of any other scenario, engaging your students in this giant digital canvas, you can have a very interesting recording of what happened during the lesson. And this is, for me, if I would be a student, that would be breathtaking. And I would remember lesson provided as in this way up for a long, long time. So that's also our goal. We want to make those experiences memorable, uh, unforgettable. Great. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I think, I think unless, um, 
So I hope, hopefully, again, this was this was useful for when you're when you're again thinking about how to implement, uh, explain everything into uh, your classroom or the work that you're doing. Um, I think you know there's not just one way to use uh, our whiteboard. Um, there's not just one specific use case, but it can be used in many different ways and for many different things. So um, we hope that you know this was a, a good inspiration for uh, some of that information. Um, but again. Yeah, and we have, uh, we have a, a wonderful uh, support team. Uh, if you have questions about kind of features or if you can do something with Explain Everything or you have an idea, um, they can be reached at, oops, let's change the size of the pen here. There we go, support at explaineverything.com as Bart is typing here. Yep. Um, we, so that's a great resource for you. We also, uh, within the application, I'm actually gonna end the collaboration right now. Uh, within this space here, uh, we actually have a learn section uh, under this thumbnail down here at the bottom. This is a wonderful space to get familiar with all the different tools within Explain Everything uh, that you might be sharing with folks. Uh, also access to our blog posts to keep up with, with kind of uh, what's going on with, with the whiteboarding community and some of the different ideas for Explain Everything. We, we put a lot of uh, thought and effort into uh, things that we're doing and so, so the development that we're doing when we build uh, Explain Everything. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we have a thing called EE Academy, which will take you through an entire overview of, of the app. It's a free, uh, it's a free class, uh, which will basically take you, again, uh, the, the focus here is to get familiar with, with what's possible with Explain Everything. So. Um, we hope that within that learn section that, that uh, all the information that's provided will help you again, get familiar with, with what's possible here. Exactly. And, everything. and we're also going to soon improve this learn section by showing examples uh, coming from experts in explain everything, showing different scenarios of how this whiteboard can be used. And one more thing to what Sam just mentioned, you always have access to the help center. I'm, I'm still on a session, uh, on this collaborative session, uh, um, showing those that are connected to it where it is. So there's a help center within the app. If you go to the top right, there are three dots. And Sam, if you go to this uh, menu on the top, yeah, exactly, there's this help center where you find a lot of articles illustrating ways of using Explain Everything. Most of those articles are illustrated using Explain Everything. So you'll, you'll find videos that we created in our tool explaining our tool. And this and is, this this is a, a media guide, which is quite nice as well. It goes to very in depth on everything <laughs> yeah. that can be done. So again, yeah. thank you, thank you for participating. We're going to provide you with a link to the video from this session, together with one pager that you asked for, with those scenarios that the one pager that I use for explanation. So this is this will come to you tomorrow in the form of an email. So thank you again for participating. Thank you, and uh, yeah, you take the last ten minutes um, back on your own, and, and again, feel free to reach out with any questions. We appreciate your time, and have a have a good uh, rest of your. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.